Quo again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Some of you know I've recently got a CNC lathe, the Slant Pro 15L, and um, I, I wanted to address the problem of chips and coolant getting out of the machine and onto the floor and jammed up in the slide rails. So I've been looking into ways of doing that. Um, so this video is going to be about that for you guys that have got Slant Pros or are thinking of getting one. So it's just a matter of uh, amongst other things getting some strips of flashing gelatine to the right width at your local sheet metal supply shop uh, and uh, just trimming it to length you might have a fine tooth fine toothed bandsaw or if not a pair of snips or a thin cutoff wheel on your grinder and you can make up some inserts or flashing to fit in a couple of different places to bar the coolant and chips from causing problems with your slant probe. Cheers. Before I decided to buy Slant Pro, I looked online to find out all I could about the machine and looked at the various YouTube videos and uh, forums and I could see a common theme that there was problems with the uh, enclosure and door leaking and jamming up with chips. In fact, you could hear it on some of the videos of the door sort of clunking along, jamming up on the chips on the rails and so on. And I thought, well, that's something I really need to try and solve because that would really annoy me. If you look at the enclosures that I've built, I deliberately avoided having a bottom rail and instead have having the uh, doors sliding on the top and then well flashed so that chips can't get into the mechanism and these doors have slid smoothly um, and just don't jam up but with the uh, slant pro I knew it was going to be a bit of a challenge to try and find a solution to that so one of the things I've been doing is watching very closely to see what's going wrong, where the coolant's coming from, how it's getting in, where the chips are coming from, how they're getting in. And it was only after I'd run several scores of parts with different types of machining operations that I could really see the, the sort of problem and where it was coming from. I mean certain types of jobs would send a shower of chips in one direction and another type of job would send a shower of coolant in another direction exposing different problems within the door and enclosure um, and I found I needed about three different fixes they're all quite quick and simple to do um, and hopefully I've got it 99% resolved now so I'll just go through what those fixes are okay so first of all just an overview um, the first thing you have to do is to adjust your door through these uh, roller adjuster positions here so that the whole door is leaning slightly down at the chuck end. It's really important. And so that that bottom gutter strip down in there, that bottom gutter strip drains back into the enclosure. Otherwise it'll drain onto the floor. So that's the first thing you have to do. Readjust the door before you do anything else. And that will slightly reposition your door and then you can cut your flashing to fit. And the plan is to put one insert in the bottom to protect the bottom rail and coolant getting in down there and another couple of inserts here between the enclosure and the door to stop chips from firing through that gap. So the first one is this flashing plate here on the inside of the bottom railing. And just to clarify that, the reason for that is at the bottom of the door there's this gutter. See the gutter down there? Well that gutter catches the coolant on the inside of the door when the door's open and it needs to drain down and out this end not the other end because when the door is open it'll just run on the floor so just going over that again it's not immediately apparent the inside of the door is obviously wet with coolant 
when you're using your coolant. So the whole inside of the door is wet and when you open the door it drips and runs down the inside of the door and ends up in that gutter. And you, you, th this insert won't protect you during that period of time. Um, and, and when it ends up inside that gutter it needs to drain this way towards the chuck end to stay within the enclosure. Okay, here's a look inside the enclosure of the flashing insert barring the chips and coolant from the door slide mechanism. Okay, so just going through the designs, these are not fully developed designs, these are just approximate um, thumbnail sketches based on my particular door and offcuts of sheet metal that I had on hand. You'll need to measure your own door and enclosure. It may be that the manufacturer has made slightly different versions and there will need to be different dimensions to suit, or it may be that you can improve slightly on some of these dimensions. They're just approximately right just to give you a bit of a head start on it. Um, so that's the bottom door slide insert flashing and here we have the left end door flashing extension. Just pause your video if you want um, to get the uh, details more clearly and this is the right end uh, door enclosure right side flashing I just used two strips and I stopped slightly short of the top bumper. You could extend it the whole way, but I don't think many chips come through in that top zone anyway. But it would be better to uh, completely go the whole way there. Um, so I just used three screws on each. Um, for example, M5 screws and hole and nuts going through six millimeter holes just drilled in there. Um, so they're the uh, approximate dimensions and um, just double check your door and enclosure that those dimensions are appropriate for your situation. I noticed that with certain types of machining work this big gap here um, was allowing a whole lot of chips to fire through like bullets and come down and land in the bottom rail. So there was a big, there's a big gap here between the door and the enclosure that with certain types of machining allows a whole lot of chips to come raining through and end up on this railing. And so to stop the chips from getting through the gap on the right side of the door I put in this flashing here two strips of flashing um, that stop just short of the door and that present the main problem is down this vertical face and that presents a bit of a problem because you want the flashing to touch the door to stop the chips from getting through but if it touches the door then it will catch on the door when the door doesn't slide exactly parallel. So then you have to have a gap and if you have a gap certain types of aluminium chips sixes and nines firing like bullets can jam in that gap and so so you have to have a big enough gap you know it's a bit of a compromise um, and the best I've found is to have a gap of about three millimeters and then you're just left with one problem area and so I put a little bit of a uh, flexible strip there and there so that when the door is opened it keeps these chips these if you have aluminium chips and they stick on there with coolant it stops them from jamming in the gap so it's a bit a bit of a fussy solution but really it's only uh, an hour's work to make that up and um, and that completely fixes that problem Postscript regarding those door rubber wipers, I thought I'd run it for a while to see whether they were really needed because it is a bit, of a, a bit of a fussy job to fit them and I've taken them off and run the machine for a few hours and really it's only a certain type of job 
a light sticky aluminium chip that it's useful for. 99% of the chips don't go through that gap um, so you probably don't need to bother with that. Just keep it in the back of your mind if you do have that particular type of issue. But um, I've found that the rails stay pretty clear and the floor stays dry without that. Maybe you'll get 1% of the chips that you had before. Um, not 100% perfect, but then again those wipers are a bit of a fiddle. So that's the door barrier flashing or cowling flashing there. Just a couple of simple bits of sheet metal. So the little cutout on the right hand end is just to remove that little protrusion there and make it a little bit more clean cut and streamlined. The cutout on the left hand end is Mark II is a better fit around there. I didn't get that quite right with my tin snips the first time. Um, probably a Mark III would be, could be made to even better dimensions. Um, the distance between these screws I've only approximated, um, you'll know from the Tormark drawings or a more careful measurement of your own machine to get that exact centre distance. It may be one or two millimetres different from my drawing. Um, the sheet metal spacer should be positioned like this on the uh, outside of the sheet metal between the uh, sorry the the sheet metal spacer sorry the the right the, the bottom rail spacer should have the sheet metal in this position so the sheet metals against the rail and the spaces on the other side the same at both ends the second fix was just to extend the length of the door flashing here just uh, I just siliconed on a piece of stainless steel um, just to extend the length of that flashing slightly to fill the gap the whole way to the left end so that left end extension flashing, this one here, just completely f fills the gap right to the left end. I'm not sure how important that is, but it's only a small job to fit that little piece of stainless steel. The bottom insert flashing helps to stop the chips and the coolant from getting in that little bottom uh, fold up of the bottom of the door. It's a great little scoop for catching coolant and chips and so that insert flashing cures that problem. And finally when I thought I had the chips and coolant problem completely beat I started doing this job which started firing chips in a different direction, steel chips up into the top of the door, through the railing, onto the top jamming up in the railing, jamming up in the rollers and so I found I needed one more piece of flashing and that's just a simple angle shaped piece of flashing 640 millimeters long held in with two screws two screws there and down the other end and the other thing I had to do was on this window um, polycarbonate glass clamp blocks I had to just machine about three millimeters off the top of them, of those three clamp blocks, uh, to clear the flashing. And it fits in there without any problem now. So it's just clear there. And that's stopping the chips from getting into the top rail. If you're machining steel, you might have that problem as I did. So here's the drawing. Just a piece of angle sheet metal, 640 long, 43 high and a 20 millimeter approximate uh, fold round for screwing onto the top part of the uh, door enclosure. Of course another way you could get chips and swarf into the main guide rail is when you're lifting it from the machine into your swarf bin. So I made up this uh, simple bit of channel 
just to drop over there. But you could also use a rag, I mean anything really to bar the uh, swarth from getting over there. There's a nice big cavernous capacity within the stand of the machine there. That's the only trouble with a rag. It doesn't really stay in place very well. But, you know, you get the idea. Then when you lift that off, you haven't got any swarf in your guide rail. Well, you can see it's just a pretty quick fix. Um, I didn't have time. I'm, I'm running a lot of parts urgently at the moment. Um, so they're just quick pencil sketches. If somebody out there's got time, perhaps you could do a 2, 2D CAD drawing, a DXF file of those parts. You could measure your own enclosure and make sure you get exactly the final millimeter dimensions here and there. Produce a 2D CAD drawing and then put that up online in one of the forums. Uh, and that way uh, other people can uh, download that file, uh, email it to the local uh, laser cutter and get the parts cut. And then in the future, uh, people with this problem can just download the file and for a few dollars get the parts cut and it's a, a plug and play fix. Alright guys, hopefully someone will have the time to do that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.